Okay guys, I'm going to do something that I've never done before. I don't know why, but um, I've never told my testimony. So, and I wrote this down, so I'm going to try to read this uh, quickly and then go and elaborate on some things. But <clears throat> I was born in 1960. And my dad was in the Navy and, and in the Hells Angels. My mom was a phone operator. And uh, she also um, was a car hop. Back then they wore roller skates and stuff. I uh, found out three years um, my, my mom's family was in the occult background. Uh, my mother never uh, forced it on me and never really saw it. Occasionally through the years, I saw a form of tarot cards, uh, but I didn't really know what it was. I remember going to all different kinds of churches when I was little. I remember one incident in a Catholic church. I refused to uh, take the cracker, and I'm not down in any churches, y'all. I'm just telling y'all my life experience and how I got to where I am today. <clears throat> anyway, I refused to take the cracker, and the lady kept trying to force it down my in my mouth, and uh, it made such a ruckus that they had to go out and get my mom, and my mom came and took me home. And then the last time I remember my parents going to church, I was sitting in the audience, and I uh, seen both of my parents be baptized. I remember a lady... Uh, uh, we we didn't go to church or anything like that, and I hadn't seen them go for a long time. And then I remember this lady came up, and she kept asking my mom if we could go to Bible school. And I was about seven or eight years old, and uh, so my mom finally agreed, and um, I went three or four times. And this one day, uh, after Sunday school, I came home, and I was playing Barbie dolls out in the yard with a friend of mine, and... I was pretending I was a minister, and I was preaching to her, and I was preaching to those dolls. And uh, I heard God's audible voice. At the time, I didn't know this until years later. God reminded me of that day. But I heard my name being called, Tammy. And it wasn't my daddy's voice, and it was I didn't know who it was, but it was very strong, very stern voice called my name. And I said, what? Uh, my friend says, what? And I said, I heard my name. She said, I didn't hear your name. So we continued playing, and then I heard it again. And I said, what? And I continued on playing that I was preaching to those dolls and her, and I never heard it again. Um, It, it was a voice that I never heard. It wasn't my daddy. It wasn't anybody, but it was very loud, and it was very stern. She didn't hear it, but I did. Uh, also, I uh, it, it seemed like things started changing for me. I started seeing things and creepy things walk by my window or in my room, and I would tell my mom, and they, they just didn't have a clue. Uh, I remember us moving a lot. From place to place because my my dad would uh, constantly was changing jobs he was an alcoholic um, he drank about a gallon of whiskey a day if it was a bad day if it was a good day it would last about three days um, my grandfather committed suicide because of incest and um, it was passed down so that's a, it was a generational spirit, and my uncle and my father molested me when I was a little girl. It was a, uh, no one ever talked about it, and it was something that we, I didn't know it was wrong. It was just something that happened all the time. Uh, then um, I always got whippings with a, a uh, shaving strap, and sometimes so severe that I was black and blue and could hardly walk. In today's society, that would be abuse. Uh, but I'll, I got whippings 
for my brother when he did wrong because I should have known better and I should have said something and so on and so on. So I got whippings not just for myself but for my brother. Um, I would um, after my mom and dad uh, after my mom and my brother would go to bed. My dad would wake me up and call me into the living room and literally for hours this was on an everyday basis not only was there beatings but this was it was more verbal than the beatings there were beatings but not as severe as the uh mental uh my on a daily basis my dad would tell me how stupid i was how dumb i was how i was a slut a whore i would never amount to anything he regretted the day i was born uh, i heard this every day uh and one day after walking home from school, I was gang raped by a bunch of boys. I literally just couldn't take any more of home life, school life. I ran away when I was 16 years old. The only lifeline that I had was my best friend across the street, and she talked about Jesus all the time. Uh, I got banned from going over there. I was forbidden to go over there. I was spending too much time over there, and so I couldn't take it anymore. I left home. Um, and so when I left home, I had so much rage, anger, and bitterness in my heart towards my dad. I, I had murder in my heart. I got into drugs, alcohol, and prostitution. I was considered an alcoholic at 18, and at 16 years old, I got a job as a bartender at 16 years old in Houston. Uh, I met this guy. He came up to me, and uh, he kept persisting, and he wanted to take me out. And he was much older than me. Um, I went out with him, and I was held captive for almost three years in drugs and prostitution. And at that time in Houston, there were nude bars everywhere. So I was not only forced to dance nude, I was forced to take drugs, quaaludes, uh, PCP, reds, every kind of downer you can think of. Uh, was the, they, they kept us wired up all the time keep us numb we did, where you couldn't think straight you couldn't just whatever there was no trying to escape or getting out and one night um they allowed us to go swimming and i took three quaaludes and i jumped off a diving board i wanted to die i wanted out i, I was done uh dove off the diving board and four days later i woke up and uh they they said that i was dead at the scene um I guess God had other things planned for me, but uh, they said I was a risk, so they locked me up in this uh, little camper for months. Uh, they fed me, but I, I was not allowed out uh, because I was a risk, so uh, I, I know it was months and months that I was there, and one day they went out to get supplies and left the door unlocked, and I got out. And I ran, I ran, I ran, I ran. And uh, this lady came uh, came up to me and she says, I don't know why, but I'm supposed to help you. And so we went to her house and I was there for three or four days, maybe a week. And he found me. And uh, he came to the door and she told me, she says, don't, don't come out. Whatever you do, don't come out. I won't let him in. And I was like, okay. And uh, they were out there for about an hour or two. And uh, so uh, I don't know what was said, but she came in and she says, we got we to gotta go. We, and we started packing up everything. She told me to get all my stuff and we left. We went to a house that, uh, excuse me, was full of guys that were from Saudi Arabia. And uh, I wasn't afraid, but I was still just wound up from you know escaping these guys and these guys were bad guys man um i mean they would kill you I, I i remember an incident with a girl that refused to do a trick and i never saw her again um uh, but i had been beaten for refusing to do tricks uh if i did not give them the money that i made that day i would get beat if i didn't make any money that day i got beat um 
But anyway, I got out, went with her. We went to these guys' house. And lo and behold, my best friend, God had spoke to her. And at the time, I think she was in Waco, Texas. Uh, but she came looking for me. She found me in the middle of Houston. Came up to the door, knocked on the door. And they said, uh, you have someone here. How did they find you? Well, she took me home and I stayed with her for a while. And I just was miserable inside. I just... I had no relationship with God, and I didn't even know where to begin. Even though she was ministering to me, I still just wasn't getting it. I left, went out straight out, went back into the drugs and the prostitution and the whole nine yards. Mm. Um, I was out doing everything you could think of. I had a dream of my mama, and it was a very vivid dream that she was very, very sick and dying. And so I made my way up to where she was, and lo and behold, she was very ill. Uh, my dad started in right in on me, and I, I couldn't stay there. So I was staying with friends, and I uh, had went to, uh, I w went out with this guy that was on a motorcycle, and we went and watched this movie. And I didn't want to watch it, but we watched it, and it was The Exorcist. We left, and... Uh, as we were going through an intersection, a woman decides to turn left, and he slams on the brakes. I went flying over him, and I slid on my belt buckle, and they told me at the emergency room that that belt buckle saved my life and the blue jeans and the cowboy boots that I had on. Not even, uh, I say about two weeks later, I was partying with some friends, and we were all going back to my apartment, and uh, I was sitting on top of the car, and we were going real slow, and he decides to slam on his brakes. I went flying off. He rolled up me. It got to here. When it got to here, it slung my body up against the curb. Uh, he ran back down me, and then went back up, and when he went back up, the wheels locked on to my hip uh, they pronounced me dead at the scene uh, the, I don't remember the paramedics the nurses or anything I remember holding Jesus' hand and begging him to let me live and I told him I would serve him I woke up in the hospital fractured pelvis messed up leg messed up arm scratches all over my body but I lived. I started kind of wanting to know more about Jesus. And I started getting into finding out about Jesus. And then I met my first husband. I didn't know until after we got a divorce that he was in the occult. Um, you see, all these things were familiar to me. But I didn't know what they were. So we got married. Um, he was very abusive to me and my child. Uh, would work, and every Friday night he would drink it up. I got tired of it, and I came back to Texas. I uh, went to work. I got a job working at Jack in a Box, worked nights, and raised my son in the daytime. One night I went to work, and uh, I met my late husband, Turned him down twice. I was angry. I didn't want nothing to do with me, and I didn't want nothing to do with anybody. I, was, I had so much anger. Just don't touch me. Leave me alone. Uh, so the very next day, he came up to my job, and he asked when I took my lunch, when I took my breaks. He came every day on my lunch break after working all day, and... So we built a relationship, and we started dating, and we got married. When we got married, he knew my past. I told him all about my past, and he loved me for me. And the thing of it is, is I had asked, I had said a small prayer. I said, God, please give me somebody that's right and somebody that will love me for me, even though of all the bad things that I've done in my life. We got married. We were married for 31 years. 
Uh, it started out right off. Um, God just started. The more I got into Jesus, the more I wanted to learn about him, the more he started opening doors for me. Uh, we had uh, a ministry going on uh, in our neighborhood. It was a lot of gang activity. And uh, we had a lot of kids in our home anywhere from 10 to 15 kids every day. God always supplied. Uh, the head gang guy in our neighborhood came to know the Lord. He is uh, still saved today, married and saved today. Uh, we helped uh, a young girl that her mother, she got pregnant, and her mother forced her down to get an abortion, actually two two or three abortions. and uh, But she has three kids today. <clears throat> um uh, just a lot of things uh, through the years. I've preached on the street corners. I, uh, but God has always thrust me into uh, dealing with people that have been in the occult or wrapped up in the occult and don't realize what they're doing or dabble in it. And then they got things in their house and they don't know why and all that kind of stuff. I have... Uh, minister to people that are widows, people that have been abandoned and rejected, abused, uh, you name it. I never really realized my testimony until this last month or so, but when I finally came to the saving knowledge, um, God started opening the doors, but what really opened the door was um, early on when we were married, my husband came home, and he picked up my son and threw him across the room. And I, it didn't look like my husband. It didn't sound like my husband. It, it was not my husband. It was a demon. I didn't know that then. But um, I started praying, and I was praying silently. I was praying in my mind. And he got up in my face, and it was not him. His face was completely distorted. Uh, it, it it was that demon, and and I I didn't have a clue what was going on, but I I kept on praying, and he he just screamed in my face, "Stop that praying! Stop that praying!" And uh, it it got worse. But I literally literally saw a light come through the ceiling, through my arm, and my arm just went out like that and touched him. And he went crazy. I saw my arm illuminating. It was glowing, y'all. I kid you not. After that, uh, I called the pastor. He didn't want to have nothing to do with it, but he said he knew some people in the church would come. And the piano player and our Sunday school teacher were spirit-filled. They came over with a bunch of guys that they knew from another church that were spirit-filled, and they literally spent hours on my husband, and I've seen things that I will never forget, uh, and that was my beginning in this. Uh, through many years of God just teaching me and, and showing me things about the spiritual realm uh, has just blown my mind through the years. Uh, my husband died of cancer it's been almost eight years my ministry kind of just stopped uh, I've done a little here and a little there God moved me here about almost five years ago and uh, well it's not been quite five years yet but uh, I was attacked when I got here I had a nosebleed for two weeks almost drowned in my own blood had to get my nose cauterized and uh, when I came back home, I heard this spirit laugh and said, that'll teach you. I knew then the war was on. I have had encounters with witches and warlocks here. Uh, and I know I'm here for a reason, and I know, uh, I, and I'm doing a little bit here and there and, and that, but God said there would be revival here, and I'm waiting on God, and I'm waiting on Him to provide um, I do what he tells me to do, go out when he tells me to go out, speak when he tells me to speak. 
I have through the years, I've had a lot of things broke off of me. Um, and still, still try to uh, conquer fear, conquer, uh, d uh, you know, um, I guess that I'm good enough to do it, you know, kind of thing. I don't know. But God tells me, just trust Him. Listen to Him. Lean on Him. And I do what He tells me to do. I say what He tells me to say. I go when He tells me to go. Uh, this walk ain't been easy. I don't know why He's having me do this, but I guess I had to because I've never really said my testimony or anything. Um, when I got married over 31 years ago and that happened with my husband that was the beginning of my journey I've been ordained three times whoopee uh, I just keep on plugging y'all I just keep on plugging I keep on doing the best I can um, I know I'm here in this world for a reason I don't know all the details yet. I don't know all the answers yet. But I know Jesus Christ is my personal Savior, and He's brought me through a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Uh, from being in an automobile accident and having three back surgeries and a neck surgery, and they told me I'd never walk again. And be in a wheelchair on a morphine pump for the rest of my life. I'm walking. He told me to trust in him. I trusted in him. I'm walking today. I have limitations. And I have aches and pains. But I'm walking. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, just one thing after another, y'all. But even losing my husband and being devastated with that. God has a purpose for me. Even though I'm by myself. Even though I'm fighting by myself, I still hold on to him. He's my father. He's the master. And he leads me and guide me. And I've learned through the years not to go out unless he says go out. A lot of times he'll have me pray and war and fast before I go out. Because why? Because of the territory. I don't have the authority. So when, you know, he has me pray or fast, I'm... I'm winning the war in the spiritual realm and then I can go out into the carnal and then that's that's just the way he does me I'm sorry but uh, I don't move unless he tells me to move I don't do because the Bible t Jesus said he didn't do until the father told him to do so I mean that's just what I do uh, I go minister to who he has me minister sometimes it's my personal one on one thing uh, sometimes he'll have me preach in a crowd just whatever I do whatever he tells me to do if he tells me to be still and be quiet I'll be still and be quiet uh, if he tells me to go he tells me to go if he tells me to pray about something or fast about something sometimes I don't know why I'm fasting but then he'll tell me during the fast or after the fast um, but anyway I hope that this helped somebody uh, because I didn't want to do it, it I mean my flesh did not want to do it, but I listened to God, and he said, do it. So this is my testimony, yeah. I've been beat. I've been sexually abused. I've been in prostitute. I've been into drugs and alcohol, everything you can think of. I was a sinner, big-time sinner, okay? But God has set me free. He has delivered me. I am saved. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I've given him my life. He has sanctified me, and uh, I keep on plugging, keep on doing what he says, and I'll be glad when he says, enter in thy good and faithful servant, and I didn't fall, I didn't fail, I try to stay humble, and I just keep on plugging. Every day that I wake up is a blessing, every day that I have breath is a blessing, so anyway, I love y'all. Thank you. This is me.